Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be continuing the series where I show off different feeder insects and my animals eating them and talk about their nutritional facts, how you can keep them, whether they're good or not to be offered all the time or more infrequently, that sort of thing. So I've done this with superworms, I've done this with hornworms, black soldier fly larvae, waxworms, earthworms. I will leave a link for that playlist down below and on the screen up here. But this one is all about mealworms. Now I don't offer mealworms to my animals with frequency just because they're so small and it takes like a lot of them to be a meal and I have a lot of animals to feed. So normally I just skip over them. But for the purpose of this video and for the purpose of offering a varied diet to my reptiles, we're feeding mealworms today. As usual, I ask that you please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, consider supporting us on Patreon or by becoming a channel member. And with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. So a millworm is the larval form of the darkling beetle. They are small and light brown or tan in color, and they are pale when freshly molted. They are not to be confused with superworms or giant millworms. Now let's talk about the life cycle of the darkling beetle or the millworm into the darkling beetle. So the life cycle begins with an egg and then a super tiny worm that grows until maturity. Next is the pupation where they look like a little alien or like that Pokemon. Is named Kakuna? I think that's what he's called. But they look hilarious. And then they become a small beetle after that stage. You can keep them at this point for breeding. They're very easy to breed. And I think I have a separate video talking about that that I will include down below and on the screen here. But you can offer the pupa stage or the worm or the beetle to your pets at any point of the life cycle. When you buy mealworms from the store, they come in a burrowing medium. Usually it'll be like super small bran flakes or like little brown flakes. In a, they'll be in a small container as well. Mealworms can be kept in this container at room temperature, but you can also keep them cooler at about 50 degrees to lengthen their lifespan and slow maturation. This essentially just means that they will stop moving. It also means that they won't eat. So if you want to properly gut load them, in my opinion, you have to keep them warmer rather than cooler. Gut loading is the process by which you feed nutritious foods to the mealworms 24 hours before you offer them to your reptiles. These nutritious foods can include the stems of leafy greens, they can include squash, bell pepper, carrot, broccoli, anything that's going to be nutritious and offer a lot of vitamins and a lot of calcium, anything that they can enjoy eating that'll pass on the good nutrients to your reptile. One thing I will say is that some people will feed a lot of like meat-based things or protein-based things to their feeder insects. This is however known to cause issues like gout in reptiles because it's too much protein and creates an issue of the kidneys. That's a whole separate issue but just to be certain you don't want to be offering a lot of like meaty things to the feeder insects. You want to offer something that's going to have like vitamins and calcium. So I offer a lot of vegetables. Sometimes I offer fruits like banana peel or I offer an orange slice. But for mealworms, I usually just stick to vegetables because they take a lot longer to devour food than like my roaches, for example. So if I put like a fruit in the roach container, it's gone pretty quick. It doesn't have time to sit and like dry out or get nasty. Gut loading is something that you absolutely should and must do for your reptiles. So if you've been purchasing your mealworms at the store and then just feed them immediately to your gecko, they're not getting like the best type of nutrients that they possibly could. So make sure that you are gut loading them. A good thing to do when you're gut loading them is to put them in a container that they can't escape from, like a plastic bin, and leave the top off. That way the food can aerate. It doesn't sit and get all moldy in the substrate and also don't overfeed them because this isn't really bad for the mealworms it's really just bad because it'll create like a nasty environment because the food will mold and get gross okay now let's talk about their nutrition breakdown so they are 65 percent moisture 19 percent protein 9 to 13 percent fat uh, the reason I say 9 to 13% is because whenever you look up the sources for nutrition facts online, everything's going to vary a bit. Just keep that in mind. 2% fiber, 2% ash, and they have a calcium to phosphorus ratio of 1.7 or 133 milligrams to 3,345 milligrams, which would be calcium to phosphorus. So 133 milligrams of calcium to 3,345 of phosphorus. The calcium to phosphorus ratio is super important because phosphorus makes it so that your reptile is unable to absorb the calcium from the feeder insect. So if there is too much phosphorus and not enough calcium, 
your reptile won't be getting the calcium that it needs from the feeder insect, which is why we dust our feeder insects with calcium. So because they have a negative calcium to phosphorus ratio, you always want to be dusting them with a quality calcium supplement. Another thing about mealworms is that they have a kind of high percentage of fat, and they're not as bad as like say a waxworm for example, but they are not going to be considered like the best insect on the market for this reason. However, it is not bad to offer them as part of a varied diet. A varied diet means you are offering a number of different types of feeder insects to your reptiles, and no matter what reptile you are feeding, you should be offering it a variety in its life because that is the way to ensure that it has like the best health because it's getting something different from each of the feeder insects. There's a couple more things to keep in mind when it comes to mealworms. There is this rumor out there, and maybe it's happened to some people, I can't say for sure. It hasn't happened to me or anybody I know. But the, the rumor is that mealworms will eat your gecko from the inside out. This is never, in my opinion, I've never seen it happen. But if you're concerned about this, you can crush the head of the insect before offering it to your pet. Now, in addition to that, their exoskeleton is hard, they are fibrous, but digestion is not going to be an issue if your husbandry is correct. So, if you're making sure that you are providing a varied diet and not just feeding mealworms, if you're making sure that the animal has proper supplementation, if you're making sure it has proper heat, proper um, hydration, you know, making sure it has water. Digesting insects, especially those with a fibrous exoskeleton like a mealworm, is not going to be a problem. And last but not least, let's talk about where you can get mealworms from. So mealworms are available from a number of, you know, pet supply retailers. You can get them from Petco, PetSmart, Pet Supplies Plus. You can also buy them online and have them shipped to your house. You can buy them at expos. I personally get mine from Josh's Frogs. I get a lot of my feeders there and I will leave a link for Josh's Frogs down below. And also if you'd like to get 15% off your first purchase of anything from Josh's Frogs, it is a one-time use, but my code is Jessica15. Just figured I'd put that out there and save you some money. But I do like getting my feeders from Josh's Frogs. I get my mealworms from there and then also I breed my own mealworms so i used to breed mine a long time ago and then i just got out of it and like fed them off until the point that there were none but i'm getting back into breeding them because they're a good feeder to have around and even if i don't always enjoy feeding them to the leos because they take forever they're definitely like a good source to have around so i'm getting back into it but yeah they're super easy to breed so if you're looking to breed a feeder insect i really recommend mealworms and again i'm pretty sure i have a video about that that i will include down below and as we wrap up this video, I'm going to be showing my tiger salamander Neville eating some mealworms. I'm also going to be showing my chubby frog Chow Chow eating some mealworms. Mealworms are going to be less often used for amphibians in my personal experience than they are with reptiles. This is just because reptiles really chew their food, so I think that they probably have an easier time digesting mealworms, whereas amphibians don't chew their food, they kind of swallow their food whole. So if you are offering them to your amphibians, I recommend using them more as a treat than as part of like a staple diet. So that's just a little bit of advice from me to you. And this is by no means necessary, but as you can see here, I'm about to crush the head of the mealworm. It's super quick and easy, but I did it just because the mealworm was curling back around and because amphibians have such sensitive skin, I didn't want it to become an issue of the mealworm like biting Neville before she actually got to get it in her mouth. And as a reminder, if you are curious about any other type of feeder insect nutrition and how to keep them and how to gut load them, etc., I will leave a playlist on the screen. Or well, actually, it was on the screen at the beginning of the video, so I can't leave it here because YouTube doesn't allow that. But I will leave it down below in the links, so make sure you check that out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my animals eating mealworms and learning about their nutrition facts and how to keep them, that sort of thing. I hope that you found it informational and insightful. If you did, let me know down below by leaving a comment or a like. Also, please subscribe with the notification bell, all the good stuff. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.